Whitmore has been so good for Texas that they're looking to see her go deeper in the game today. Again, she came into the series top 25 in the country in ERA. But walked one, hit a batter yesterday, allowed two earned. Three total. Emily Hot, as usual, leading things off for Baylor. It's a player who's had two triples in the last two games. Out of Baylor's five triples on the year, she's got four of them. Well, the senior offensively really being able to display everything she can do here in her final year in a Baylor uniform. I don't know if you noticed that a Gutierrez, the past few starts, she's given up back-to-back -back outings of multiple earned runs for the first time this season against Texas State and then yesterday. Seeing anything different, especially early in games from her? Well, I think Wednesday we saw her get behind in the count and then have to serve up some pitches right over the heart, not at the heart of the plate, but over the wide of the plate, and Texas State was ready for those. And the other piece is when she's behind in the count, you don't always want to be predictable using her off-speed pitch to go ahead and even the count. So if she's unable to land her hard pitches, then it becomes predictable that you're going to get the off-speed and the hitter's count. And Baylor was able to force her to really have to throw around the zone, and they were very patient against her yesterday. And a full count to begin the game. Chopped over to Alyssa Washington and on to Katie Simmons, who's getting the start at first base today. Batting second and playing shortstop, number 16, Presley Pylon. Well, there you see head coach Glenn Moore. 900 20. career wins with Baylor, over 1,000 for his career. 24 years there at the Baylor helm. You saw there 15 postseason appearances, four, four World Series appearances. He's done such a great job with the program. And it's, I hate to admit that 24 years ago, I was in the recruiting circuit and getting the call from Glenn Moore when he had just moved over to Baylor, but obviously got to also witness as a player his impact on that program early. over there in second, two away. Great job by Gutierrez, using her drop ball in the outer half and allowing her defense to work. I think that's the other key, Alex, is as a pitcher for Texas right now, you have to be able to trust your defense and let them work. They get a ton of ground balls, especially Sitlali Gutierrez with her drop ball and Mac Morgan. So the middle infielders get a lot of work when those two are on the mound. Strike one to Shaylin Govan, top 15 in the nation in batting average. Couple of walks on Friday night. Homered yesterday. Went deep against Texas last year as well. And the power is absolutely effortless. That was dead to the farthest part of the field too, straight 220. Have to be careful when you're pitching to her, staying low in the zone, mixing speeds. As most power hitters, they're stronger up in the zone. So Lali Gutierrez with the drop ball has the ability to induce ground ball here against Govan. Not a player you want to make a mistake to is the count evened up at two. Texas 18 and two here at McCombs Field this season. the grab, Gavan hustling over to second, safe.
Bella Dayton started heading back to the track and then had to reverse field quickly. Well, off the bat, this is up, but Bella Dayton thinking it is deeper than it is. Shaylin Govan benefits from the fact that outfield has to play deep knowing her power. But that pitch, off speed, she got just ahead of it, falls right in, but heads up base running by Govan to keep running as she saw the ball bounce on the ground. It sounded dangerous off the bat. It sounded kind of worse than it was. Swing and a miss from Aaliyah Binford. Well, the swing looked really good, and I think Govan was just enough ahead of it that it did stay in the park, but it still was towards the end of what you'd consider the barrel and the sweet part of the bat. The wind has caused some issues at this ballpark this year, especially over the past few weeks. The wind has been swirling from left to center, then over to right at times. Saw Kate and Henry get taken back to the wall as the wind got a hold of one. Off the bat of the Baylor hitter. You have to commend the effort though by Bella Dayton on that ball, the misread, but going all out to try to go ahead and figure out how to catch it. And now the count three and one to Binford. She was a 300 hitter for her career coming into this year, coming off off-season knee surgery, still trying to get going in the batter's box. Had a couple of hits last night. And yesterday in that game two matchup, chops one over to Martinez, handles that one with ease. Maloney leading off for the third consecutive game. Before that, she had only let off once in her career. Getting the start in the circle, Riley Crandall, who allowed five runs in five innings to Texas on Friday night. Well, Ashton Maloney has quietly done work in the nine hole, and I think if you're the casual fan, you overlook the fact that she's hitting 427 down there for Texas and continually turning it over to what was either Bella Dayton or Caden Henry. Coach White moving her to lead off. She has three for seven in this series so far, has been able to get herself on base and still manufacture runs for Texas. Texas scored three times in the first inning yesterday. Riley Crandall's a pitcher who beat Texas twice last year. Two complete game victories and allowed just one run in each of those contests. Obviously, Friday night, it was a different story up in Waco. When you talk to Coach Glenmore and he talks about his staff and just specifically Riley Crandall wanting to see consistency, he said there are games where she is absolutely dominant. What a play by Presley Pylon over at short. Ashton Maloney disagrees. We'll see if Texas offers up a challenge. Kristen Zaleski making the challenge signal. Mike White agrees, and they will. By the naked eye, very close. Maloney believes she's safe. Pylon does a great job picking that ball and making a good throw on the run. Oh. Uh, I think Ashton Maloney gets her foot down before that ball is in the glove. Make it eye, it was really close. The upon further orange back, trying to avoid collisions over at first base. I don't know if that would eliminate as many reviews. The challenge successful. Ashton Maloney's speed beats that one out. Lead off hitter aboard for Texas. She can run six stolen bases on the season. There's a different starting catcher today for Baylor as well, so keep an eye on that. Zadie LaValle behind the plate. Here's Mia Scott, corners playing in. Mia Scott with four hits in the series. Well, the plus side for Texas is they were only one for six yesterday with leadoffs. Today, one for one already with Maloney on base. Ooh, and that one plunked Scott. It looked like in the thigh. Obviously a bit frustrated as she heads over to first. Well, Alex, in our time covering Texas here on Longhorn Network, I think we've seen Mia Scott matrix a lot of pitches to get out of the way. I, if there's one person I think really does not ever want to get hit by the ball, even if it means 
a free base, it's Mia Scott, because she does anything and everything to try to get out of the way of those. It's only the second time all year she's been hit. Here's Vivi Martinez, drops down the bunt. Crandall on to first. Two in scoring position. What was that average over the last five games for Martinez? I think it was something like 714, but uh, Texas is going to go ahead and use her to put two in scoring position and see if they can get two runs early because if Reese Atwood can get through the infield, then Mia Scott should score rather easily from second. Reese Atwood sitting on 99 career hits. And by the way, also just nine RBIs shy of the Texas single season record. She has 57 on the year. Now Reese Atwood able to get her 100th RBI in her career yesterday. Important numbers everywhere for Atwood. And starting to heat up again as of late. Three hits yesterday, two in the midweek contest against Texas State. Top three in the country and runs driven in. Well, and it's easy to overlook what she's doing when she was getting so many extra base hits early in season. The home run numbers were piling up rather fast the first part of season. Even doubles, she was able to get a lot of opposite way extra baggers. But the catcher just continuing to plug away and work away in the four hole. Probably the one spot in the lineup Texas hasn't shuffled around much as Reese Atwood in the four hole. Crandall one ball away from loading the bases. Texas said the bases loaded numerous times yesterday. Atwood just the fifth player in Big 12 history to earn National Player of the Week honors in two of the first three weeks of the season. Mike White said it in all this time, even going back to Oregon, he had never seen somebody start off a season the way Reese Atwood did. Launches one to deep left center. That one off the wall. Reese Atwood starts things off with a two-run double. Texas is on the board. Well, I said she was working quietly, and this is a loud hit for her 100th hit of her career. Reese Atwood, a double off the left center wall. Two RBIs, Texas up 2-0 early. But Alex, you said it, she's been steady in this series. Now starting to flex a little bit of the power with an extra base hit here. Now seven RBIs away from tying the Texas single season record. She's over at second, one away for Alyssa Washington. So three of the first four batters have reached, a couple of hits and a hit batter. The captain, Washington, having a career year at the plate, four for four in this series. And hit her seventh home run of the year yesterday. That is a career high. You know, Alex, it's hits like that, that double, that I wonder if the hitters wish the fence would sink a little bit as a pitcher of her last year here at McCombs Field. Including walks, she's reached seven times in this series already, seven times in the first two games. And another three ball count. Again, this is a Baylor pitching staff that is down to about three pitchers right now. We talked about all the injuries they've suffered as far as pitching and offensively throughout the year. We saw Binford throw about 125 pitches yesterday. And that's a player coming off off-season surgery. And you see it there already in the bullpen today as Casey West, their third arm, is playing second base. It was a 5-0 game when Crandall left the contest on Friday. And then right when she left, Texas put nine more on the board. And that 14-1 win. Washington down the line into failed fair.
foul territory, excuse me, as that one hauled in, and Atwood will advance to third, two away. Caden Henry coming up. Melissa Washington retired for the first time in this series, but still a productive out for the senior captain. Time called with Henry up at the plate. Caden Henry, another great grab in center field yesterday. Three hits in the series so far. Well, the outfield play for Texas, Alex, as you mentioned, Caden Henry's amazing grab. So fast out there that they make some, they make routine plays obviously look easy. They make some hard plays look routine. And then when they don't make the really difficult plays, a lot of people expecting the outs to be made no matter where it is. But Caden Henry anchoring that in center field this year as a freshman. Texas and softball fans should be excited to watch her work over the next three years. Hitting just under 400 on the season, leading the team in stolen bases as well. So after those two runs were scored a moment ago, on the season now, Texas has outscored their opponents 300 to 81. Longhorns undefeated when scoring first this year. A full count coming up, already 26 pitches in this opening frame for Crandall. Well, that a good equalizer pitch from Crandall in the inner half and have to imagine Kate Henry was probably sitting middle out with her plan. Called strike three. Martinez, Leanne Good, Sitlali Gutierrez, and then you threw in the redshirt freshman of Ashton Maloney. And they're continuing to do it as sophomores, reaching that century mark for hits already. And we still have three, four weeks of regular season left to play. And then you talk about postseason, so a lot of out offensive production from that sophomore class. And Coach White and his staff excited too. Just continue to see them grow as juniors and seniors and wouldn't be surprised if by the time that class is done, their names are all over the record books. Offense is averaging about seven and a half runs per year, per game this year. As there is a strike to Sydney Collazos in the five spot. Senior out of Georgetown. She had an interesting quote about herself. Described herself as an extrovert bordering on obnoxious. <laughs> In her words, Glenn Moore said, yeah, it's going to be a lot quieter next year at this time without her. I mean, I guess if you can uh, Did you ever play with, recognize with any it? players <laughs> with any Two two on the way to Coyazos, the extrovert. Don't answer that, Cat. I was just commending her. I guess if you can admit to it, then at least you yes, know. That's half the battle. You're not getting offended when someone <laughs> says you are obnoxious. <laughs> but, you know, I think every team has to have somebody that might tiptoe that line just for the energy to get going and yes. especially in lulls where everybody kind of buys into the that this is a not great situation kind of mood and you get that obnoxious person who changes the tone a little bit feisty catchers it's part of the deal yeah. she comes up with the base knock it might be a catcher thing <laughs> lead off single here in the second here comes Casey West, who has alternated between pitching and playing second today, getting the start at second. It's been a heck of a pitcher at times. In fact, a couple of seasons ago, pitched the first perfect game in Baylor history. That struggled a bit in the circle. Friday night, the series opener. Had a 
lot of alumni in the house yesterday. A lot of familiar faces. I saw our old friend Megan Willis here, Janae Jefferson, Lindsay Stevens Barrera, to name a few. Yep, you add uh, career home run leader, Taylor Hoagland. Charging at Mia Scott. Great hustle by Scott. She's played such good defense over at third this year. Well, Baylor using the sack bunt to get themselves a runner in scoring position. Casey West positions this well, but Mia Scott, as you mentioned, Alex, so aggressive. She will not let a pitcher field it if she believes she has a play on it. We've also seen her go all the way to the first baseline to make a play this year. Tremendous by the junior. Oh my, what a slide and snag by Alyssa Washington. The captain. This is a run saving grab. This looks like a hopper up the middle to get through Alyssa Washington. The easy pick and throw. Cuyazos is going to be going hard home if that ball is even bobbled. Great job by the senior. Defense making plays early in this one. Two way for Zadie Lavalley with a run over a third. Well, those defensive plays are going to be the key for Texas down the stretch into postseason, being able to not just make the routine plays, but make the game changer plays like that one by Washington. You're right, that definitely brings in a run if that finds its way to center field. Even though Henry's got a great arm. Go right, Aider. Chase that one. So Gutierrez now in kind of a rebound start. How is she looking compared to yesterday? Well, better. She's able to control the zone a little better. Still getting behind some of these hitters a little bit too much, but she's able to locate her off-speed pitch. Felt like yesterday really didn't have command of either side of the plate, but she is able to use her drop outside to the right-handed hitters a little bit better today. And that is a strike. Lavalle dropped the bat, headed over to first. She'll head back to the box. Not a close pitch there. Bicet Lali Gutierrez could have possibly been called a strike two. Takes one to right field, and Baylor is on the board. Their third hit of Gutierrez. Well, Gutierrez went inside to get the swinging strike, and Lavalle adjusting, knowing that that pitch was probably coming again. This time it's elevated. She's able to drive that in the 3 4 hole. And Lorena, Texas, again with a runner over at first. A couple of singles in this inning for Baylor. They're out hitting Texas 3 2, but trailing on the scoreboard. One and one. Pokes one off of Mia Scott. Both runners are safe. It was a hard hit ball from Wachendorf. Oakland Moore going to gamble and hope that Hot can go ahead and deliver one into the outfield off of Gutierrez. As you mentioned, top of the game, Alex Hot does have two triples in this series. Three for six overall, so seeing the ball well.
One and two. Good job by Gutierrez to get ahead in this about crucial one to get themselves out of the inning. He now has been able to nibble off the plate to where Hawk can't get all of it. Takes one to right field. Rounding third base is Rowett, and we are tied at two. Emily Hot does it again. That's now five hits off Gutierrez in an inning and two thirds. Well, this is an off speed pitch, and it's off the plate, but Hot still able to go out and get around it. Gutierrez is going to have to work lower in the zone when she's heading ahead in the count, but good hitting right there by Emily Hot. Baylor with a chance to take the lead. Runners on the corners. The Presley Pylon. Junior shortstop. 4 singles for the Bears here in the second. Morgan warming up in the Texas bullpen in case she's needed. Saw Texas go to the pen early yesterday. In fact, it was in this same inning. You know where he's falling at the go. Get it right there. One and two to Pylon. Pylon, great defensive shortstop. Offensively, has driven in 10 runs on the season. Well, interesting right now, both to Emily Hot and Presley Pylon. Gutierrez is only working away. We haven't seen her go low and in to these left-handed hitters against Baylor. And if you look at Pylon, she's really close to that chalk line, getting on the plate to be able to cover the outside part of the plate. Pylon fights one off. Gutierrez on the season, 32 strikeouts. Looking for her first today. And time is called. And again, time. Well, Gutierrez called time the first time, and while she had her hand in her glove there, I feel like Reese Atwood might have been confused on what was coming, so she jumped up and called time. Just getting a piece of that one is Pylon. Well, Gutierrez outing against Oklahoma was so good. She was able to go in and out. She jammed Oklahoma up quite a bit. Haven't seen her use that inner half a lot so far in this game, and that's something she has to have. That was the 30th pitch of the inning for Gutierrez. It's up to 50 on the day. Pylon takes one to right field. That's a fair ball, and Baylor has grabbed the lead. Presley Pylon with a two-out RBI single. We said she needed to go inside. She goes inside, but Presley Pylon able to drive this right down the line. Just keeps it fair by three or four feet. Great relay by Texas to only allow one run, but Pylon and the Bears, good two out rally here. And now five of their six hits have been with two outs. Two out RBI double for Pylon. Here's Shaylin Govan, doubled in the first inning, homered yesterday, and they will intentionally walk her to load the bases. What already feels like a key moment in this game, if that's going to be the case. 
You're going to have Aaliyah Binford coming up, who again throughout her career has been a terrific hitter, a 300 hitter. But coming off knee surgery during the offseason this year, she's been hitting below 200. Well, hitting below 200 hasn't been in the offensive lineup consistently, but in this series, Alex, is three for six. So has been seeing Texas pitching well. Six Baylor batters have reached in this inning, including five in a row after the intentional walk. So here is Aaliyah Binford, the junior from New Braunfels. Swing and a miss. That was a great off-speed pitch by Sitlali Gutierrez, first pitch of the at-bat. Even though Emily Hott drove the off-speed pitch for a single right field, would have liked to see her use that pitch right there against Pylon after she fouled as many off as she did. Called strike two. Binford stays alive. Texas fans trying to see Gutierrez and company get out of a jam here in the second. And force Baylor to leave the bases loaded. And they do just that. Called strike three looking. Three left on. Baylor. And trailing by one here as we begin the bottom of the second. Both pitchers with extended outing so far. Even in just that first inning, 26 pitches for Crandall. A couple of base knocks given up, hit a batter as well. And falls behind here 2-0 to Stewart. Well, as you get deeper into conference play, your conference foes know so much about your tendencies with the ability to access so much video of every pitcher, every game. But at the same time, if you consistently hit spots and you consistently make the ball spin, even if a hitter knows what's coming, don't get me wrong, you're still going to give up hits, but you should still be able to have the control factor. And I think both sides right now, because Coach Glenn Morris talked to us about it as well, is the consistency of pitchers to hit good spots. Coach White talks to us about it all the time with his staff is that consistency is what a coach is looking for. And when you have to flip a coin on what you're going to get when you run a pitcher out there, it makes it a little bit stressful to be able to have a game plan. Yeah, it's one thing to show flashes of brilliance, but when you're a ranked team, you need that game in and game out. A couple of home run swings from Stewart results in a full count. This, the, talking about a lot of pitches on the arms, the fourth full count, consecutive full count by Riley Crandall against this Texas lineup. And ends up striking out Stewart. It's not back-to-back -back strikeouts for Crandall. Uh, Crandall got Caden Henry looking to end the first and get, expands the zone upward against Katie Stewart there. We don't see Katie Stewart take too many swings out of the zone. Overly aggressive there for the first out. Here is Katie Simmons getting the start over at first. The ninth start of the season. He's had a good year hitting 359 in limited action. Oh, she was a top prospect coming out of Umble, number five catcher in the nation. Well, with the emergence of the, the super sophomore class and now the success of the freshman class, Caden Henry and Katie Stewart, both offensively, Katie Simmons has found herself a little bit more of a role player, but she's done a tremendous job adopting that role, able to come in, pinch hit, some clutch hits, and then the spot starts. She's been ready every time her number's been called. Yeah. 
Texas has scored 23 runs in the first two games. Put up two in the first inning today. As Simmons awaits the 2-1. Oh, got high enough to get in here. Well, you mentioned all the full counts earlier. It's 2 2. Now, Glenn Moore said that if there's one thing that drives him crazy, it's three ball counts. He said our pitchers do not need to be going to that many three ball counts. But we'll have another one right here, coach. Well, and the key with a three ball count is as a hitter, you know the pitcher has to bring it to you. They're not going to put you on for free. And unless it's a pitcher that's extremely confident in their swing and miss ratio, they're going to throw something within the zone. And as a hitter, you're ready to hit. A lot of times that's the pitch that gets hit hard. And a one out walk to Simmons. First walk in the game for Crandall. Mike White, now the 10th straight game against a ranked opponent, six wins in those contests. Two losses coming to Oklahoma State and one loss to Oklahoma. By the way, we're keeping an eye on the Oklahoma State-Iowa State game. Oklahoma State dropped the first two games of that series. They were ranked number five. <laughs> Iowa State was unranked. Right now, it looks like Oklahoma State's in control. 6-1, top of the sixth. But yeah, Iowa State, the highest ranked series win for Iowa State in program history. Alex, that one is coming for you. They're about 10 feet away. Fan ends up with a souvenir. Good crowds this year, especially in conference play. Good crowds. I think you can judge usually by what the outfield looks like. And left field wall isn't too packed today, but the stands that they've added out in the outfield the last couple years now abundant with burnt orange fans. You got bullseyes on you if you're standing beyond left field with the way this team is hitting this year. 47 home runs, including one by Dayton yesterday, her first of the year. Camera on just in case. Barely peeking over the wall there. <laughs> Chopped to right field. Bella Dayton reaches. Two on, one away. A one run deficit is nothing for an offense like we've seen out of Texas this year. No great job by Bella Dayton to battle in that at bat after getting down 0-2 early. Just puts the ball right in the 3-4 hole. Katie Simmons was just quick enough. I thought that ball might clip her heel. Here comes Ashton Maloney, continues to get it done now in the leadoff spot. I mean, you go around the country and you ask people who's the best hitter on this Texas team. I don't know how many would say Ashton Maloney if you hadn't been following the team. But we have, and the numbers are what they are for a reason. She leads the team in the batting average 434, was a great hitter last year as well. That's just all she's done since she arrived on the 40 acres. Has hit well, being rewarded now. Batting in the leadoff spot. Well, at one point, Texas had four and five hitters over 400. She's just the remaining over 400. And, you know, you talk coming in today, 427. Coming in today was 463 in conference play. Same thing last year. She was better in conference play. That went high and inside, and she ends up going around. The key here for Ashton Maloney now is not necessarily can she get a base hit, but can she have a productive at bat that moves the runners into scoring position to set the table for Mia Scott and Vivian Martinez. Back up the middle, base knock for Ashton Maloney. Rounding the bases is the pinch runner, Adea Wallace. And we are tied at three.
Well, I said it didn't have to be a base hit, and Ashton Maloney said, oh yeah, here we go, 0-2, base hit up the middle. Adea Wallace inserted for Katie Simmons. She is fast, and she easily scores on this. Walkendorf doesn't even throw home. Texas goes ahead and ties this game. Coach White using his bench. Deja vu tied at three in the second inning, just like yesterday. Simmons with the walk, Dayton with the single, Maloney with the single. We'll see how Scott follows up after she was hit by a pitch in the first. That's a base knock into the gap. It will roll all the way back to the wall. And Mia Scott ends up on second with a two-run double. Texas has retaken the lead. Well, Mia Scott doesn't waste any time. This pitch low in the zone, but over the plate. She drives that just out of the reach of Casey West. As soon as Ashton Maloney sees that in the gap, she knew she was off to the races to score. I actually thought Mia Scott could have possibly gotten designated just to watch runners. You heard it from the home plate umpire, Frederick Ewald. Call stands. Well, in a game of uh, momentum right now, Baylor unable to take that away from Texas. But the number of times, Alex, that Texas has gotten called for leaving early, I believe they've been uh, having a lot of conversations about that and making sure, especially in situations where there's a lead runner ahead of you, that you're not trying to leave too early because there's nowhere for you to go until that runner is moving. We showed Katie Stewart's hits against Oklahoma. She had a double taken away because of her honor leaving early. And now the count 2-0 to Martinez. Well, in a game of benchmarks right now. Mia Scott with her 100th RBI as well. Junior always in the top part of the lineup, so a little bit harder sometimes to be able to drive in those runs, but Oof. does such a good job. She was trying to leave the yard there. We saw that from Katie Stewart a few at-bats ago. I couldn't finish my sentence. That swing was so hard. <laughs> that popped the mid of LaValle. Scott to center, drifting over his Wachendorf towards left field, makes the catch for out number two. That ends a stretch of four straight Texas batters reaching base safely. Mentioned Reese Atwood coming up with hit number 100 of her career. Here she is with two away at the two run double in the first inning. Mia Scott still over at second. We see Texas starting to be aggressive early in the count. Ashton Maloney got 0-2 and drove that up the middle, but had two swinging strikes. Mia Scott hit early in the count. Vivi Martinez, now Reese Atwood. The interesting part of that is the fact that Riley Crandall was going deep in the count to so many hitters. We saw five straight full counts. So while yes, your first pitch might be there, if it's not pretty, be a little bit more patient to work the count. Atwood, another base knock for the sophomore. Here comes Mia Scott making a 6-3 Texas lead. This is an off-speed pitch, knowing how aggressive Texas is being, but it is up in the zone. Reese Atwood drives that right past Collazos at third base. Another RBI for Reese Atwood. And that puts her at 60 
Just the third Texas hitter in program history to have 60 RBIs in a single season, following Taylor Thom in 2013 and Lindsey Stevens in 2014, who we were just talking about. Was that all right. game yesterday? Set the all-time record with 66 in a season. This one popped up to left field. Hot is there, and that one. He's looked better in the first inning, had a little bit of a rough patch in the second after getting two outs, but did leave on the strikeout looking of Aliyah Binford, but Texas gonna go ahead and try to disrupt Baylor's offensive momentum using Mac Morgan, the junior. Hard throwing, a lot of down balls, so Texas defense should get a lot of work with quite a few ground balls. 8-1 on the year, a sub-2 ERA. And again, picked up her first save of the season. Yesterday in game number two. Saw Tegan Kavan, the freshman, start the opener in Waco. And Gutierrez making the final two starts of the series. Here's the first pitch from Morgan to Coyazos, who singled in the second. There's strike one from Morgan. Mack had the no-hitter earlier this year in the five-inning run rule victory over San Diego. And whenever they have called upon her, whether it's to come out of the bullpen, whether it's to get the start, she's answered the bell. Well, she, start, she got starts at the beginning of the year, then was kind of more of a relief role. And then Coach White going ahead and using her as a starter after that first conference series. But just so drastically different than the other arms in the Texas bullpen to where she throws upper 60s, heavy drop ball, so it's hard to get it out of the infield. It's gonna have to adjust here to the zone and be able to attack the lower half without it being over the plate. That's surprising for her. It's a pitcher who doesn't usually mess around with batters, doesn't usually walk too many at all. The leadoff walk to Coyazos. Here is Casey West, who grounded out in the second. Well, when you're a drop ball pitcher, you have to establish that you can throw the drop ball in the zone before you start stretching it out of the zone. Because good offenses, and especially offenses that have seen you time and time again, Baylor obviously has already seen Mac Morgan, not just in this series, but in the course of her career. They know that your drop is gonna drop out of the zone. So if you don't prove that you can throw in the zone, they're not gonna chase. So you're not gonna get that chase rate and the swing and miss that you're looking for if you haven't pounded the zone already. Mac Morgan almost proved my point right there, going 0-2 by throwing called strikes to Casey West. Almost got a swing there out of her by going lower in the zone on the outside corner. There's a strikeout from Morgan. The dif difference in Mac Morgan and Sitlali Gutierrez is that Mac Morgan is going to use both sides of the plate. She went in out, out, and back in to Casey West. She paints that corner about knee height to right-handed hitters, and when she keeps that tight to them, it is so hard for them to hit at all, yet hit well. What well, misses outside to Anna Watson. Baylor with six hits, equaling Texas in that category. But trailing by three in the runs department with a runner over at first. And now a 2-0 count. This is the final ranked game of the regular season for both of these teams. Again, Texas will get a bit of a respite coming off 10 consecutive ranked opponents. You can hear that play called dead. Great job by Mac Morgan to go ahead and fill and make the play. Ball in tight on Anna Watson. Hits off of her before going in play. Uh, 
Scott on to second for one. Two away. Texas defense been very strong this year. On the season 13 and one. When they don't commit an error, two away now for Zadie Lavalley, who drove in a run in the second inning with an RBI single. When you talk about Texas's defense, and that clean defense is what secured the series win against Oklahoma to give Texas much needed momentum here. Halfway point of Big 12 play. We talked to Vivi Martinez post game yesterday. She was mentioning how that series gave the team so much confidence, obviously. <laughs> Throw back to first, close, but not in time. And speaking of Oklahoma, I mean, what of a turn of events they dropped two here last weekend. And then they lose to, to BYU, and it ended up being pretty. Handily, nine to four loss in Norman. That one turns foul. Yeah, game two of that series, BYU took the lead, and Oklahoma came back a couple times, but tie the game. But BYU just would not go away, able to secure a victory there in Norman. I believe might have been highest ranked win for their program this weekend as well. I mean, it is wide open this year. Oklahoma State, as we said, dropping two to unranked Iowa State. Five of the top six teams in the rankings losing this week. It'll be interesting to see what all the top 25 polls look like after the weekend's over. Two-out walk issued. Tying run will come up to the plate. That is a good question, though. Texas, obviously, the score stands, will remain number one. As he said, everybody else close to them lost at least once. Yeah, Texas. Secured their midweek against Texas State. If they can sweep here, they are undefeated on the week. Duke lost to Campbell. And now what What are the... Oh, you dropped one. Oklahoma State dropped two. The voters look look at as being worse. Oklahoma losing at home to BYU or Duke losing to Campbell in that midweek contest. Oh. I would have to think the Duke loss, if you're looking at the rankings, would probably weigh heavier. I look at it that way too, it's a single game. When you're talking about a series, it's easier for an opponent to know you and to start to you know, make adjustments. Yes, obviously, you still want to be able to sweep, but I just think that's a different um, scenario when you've already faced somebody the day before. Two one count, meanwhile, to Wachendorf with two on. A couple of walks and a strikeout for Morgan out of the pen. Count evened up, fooled Wachendorf. Got her, Mac Morgan. Second strikeout. Team continues to battle. Had the lead there for a moment in the second inning. What do they need to do to, to continue to get going offensively and hang in this one? Yeah, I got a different look now, a little more down in the zone. Um, you know, I, I think we're aggressive. That's what we asked them to do at the beginning of the game. Swing it, balls in the zone, not take pitches. We took some early. Uh, made an adjustment there, I think. So we're putting it in play and barreling up some balls. We just... It's hard. You can't give up a uh, four spot. Uh, you've got to you've got to pitch a little bit better and play a little bit better on defense to, to squelch those hitters. 
Well, Coach, Riley Crandall in the circle has had some bright moments. What do you see from her today, and what have you been talking to her about to keep Texas at bay yeah, here? You know, she's a little sore before the game. I think her velo may be down a little bit. Uh, we've got to be more competitive with our missed pitches, I think. We're, uh, we're, we're letting them off the hook too much, and got to go in there and compete a little bit more. That's what I'd like to see. Appreciate it, All Coach. Right, thank thank you. you. One of the classiest guys in the game, Glenn Moore. 900 wins at Baylor, more than 1,000 for his career, 24 seasons. Leading the squad up in Waco, but his team facing a three-run deficit here. Riley Crandy, Crandall back out in the circle for inning number three. All six runs earned, a couple of strikeouts, and a walk given up. Well, I'll tell you, if you are a pitcher, you get, I want to say the best of both worlds, but you get two incredibly smart pitching minds in not only coach Glenn Moore who was an amazing men's pitcher and player in his own right but Brittany Sneed Newman who had an all-american career at LSU played for coach Moore and has now been on his staff over at Baylor for almost the entirety of his career there we keep saying it I mean it's a testament to the job he's done you lose your ace you lose two top hitters you lose one of your top prospects and you're still ranked and in the top 20 in RPI, that's some serious coaching going on up in Waco. Well, for the first out here, Caden Henry is retired. Here comes Katie Stewart, who was swinging for the fences in her first at bat. When he talks about the missed pitches, he wants the pitchers, even when they're throwing a ball intentionally, so in an 0-2 count, a 1-2 count, maybe after a hard foul ball, he wants them to be competitive, and he feels like Crandall has missed way wide, way high. Katie Stewart's strikeout pitch was actually a rise ball that was competitive, very similar to that one right there. So he wants them to force hitters to have to watch it all the way in as opposed to knowing out of the hand that it's nowhere close to the zone. 2-0 on the way from Crandall. Another three ball count. Waiting for a souvenir. We're waiting for a home run ball. Yeah, doing some cheers, it looks like, too. Chant to ourselves. <laughs> Texas hit two home runs yesterday, Dayton and Washington. Stort was ahead in the count in the last at bat. Ended up striking out. Here's the payoff pitch. And at bat number two. And earns a walk, the team leader in that category. Here comes Katie Simmons, who earned a free pass in the second inning. Well, the patience of Katie Stewart is usually on display, so the strikeout in the second inning, a little bit uncharacteristic. But her and Katie Simmons back to back can really make pitchers have to throw a ton of pitches. Pitchers go into the box with a plan, and typically it's either a pitcher's tendency or in this case probably how has Riley Crandall thrown me over the course of our career, so last year and this year. But I feel like Katie Simmons sticks to the plan as good as any hitter there is. You nope. don't see her chase out of her plan and too often. Got a hold of that one just a millisecond ahead as it turned foul.
This one lifted to left center field, hauled in on the track by Walkendorf. Wind blowing exactly in that direction, but she has been very good in center here over the last 24 hours. Well, a loud out for Texas there. Katie Simmons putting a good charge in that. Just a little bit too much hang time on that ball for Katie Simmons. Two away for Bella Dayton, and this is just about her time of the year. As we head towards the postseason, but in foul territory, unable to make the grab is hot. A few more extra base hits, swinging away with a little bit more power. She's used her short game and a slap a lot more this year as a senior. That one was headed right towards us. It just like a few inches higher above the netting. A few inches higher, that was totally coming in Did at you see us. my, no pun intended, cat-like reflexes? Yeah. I was ready. You and me both. I was ready. I'm not sure what sound came out of my mouth. LaValle well, looking up and unable to hang on to that one in foul territory. Again, another opportunity for Dayton coming up. Well, this is two foul balls and two opportunities that Baylor had. Hot lost him in the shadows down in left field, but this ball spins right out of LaValle's glove. To be honest, though, LaValle either has to turn around or Cuyazos has to call her off as she's coming in for that, but that spun out of LaValle's glove, and Bella Dayton has new life. And that is not their usual starting catcher, LaValle, as that one gets away from her. And taking second is Katie Stewart. LaValle coming off the bench to start the series finale. So now runner in scoring position for Dayton. Skies one to center. Wackendorf is there. And the inning comes to an end. A walk to Katie. Third softball player to be in the Texas Sports Hall of Fame. Shauna Daya went ahead of us, a pitcher from Texas A&M. I believe led them to a national championship before it was under the NCAA. AWIA, maybe? Sure. It's just what I was going to say. <laughs> Emily Hotz won for two with a single. But congratulations again to Krista as you have to make some room next to you over there in the Hall of Fame. Well, Krista transferring here to Texas from UCLA after her freshman year and in Texas's really second year as a program was so huge in helping build this program and get Texas into the spotlight nationally. So well earned, not only just her time here, but obviously, as you mentioned, the two Olympic teams and her first Olympics, she actually was still in high school. So big deal That's there. Unreal. A lot of people think it was crazy. I took a year off of college to do it, but Krista was either still in high school or just finished. So really young to get that first experience. What were the nerves like as Emily Hot fouls one off playing in Olympic games compared to playing in postseason or World Series games with Texas? I will tell you, it is so different in the fact that you stand on the mound and all of a sudden it's not just like, oh, this game's on TV, like when we were in college, but more of the whole world can watch this. And I just remember that thought process at one point looking going, Man, the whole the whole globe could be watching this game right now, and all of a sudden you have to snap yourself back to reality and be like, okay, while I'm thinking that, I have to build a pitch. But how did you do that, the circle, when it, to kind of zone that out and realize, all right, I, I still have to go out here and pitch? Well, I think it took three pitches. I was still shaking nervously for a while. I, I believe my first pitch hit eight feet in front of the plate and ricocheted off. My catcher did a great job blocking it, but uh, it took a little bit to just shake off the nerves. Even though you're telling yourself it's still just pitching and it's still the same game. Battle here between Morgan and Hot. Yeah, most people cannot comprehend going into that environment and performing well. Well, no, you, it, it really is one of those where you have to be able to have a routine that zones you into, as a pitcher, just you and your catcher. And Morgan ends that lengthy battle with a strikeout. 
Well, on the ninth pitch of this at bat, Mac Morgan paints the inner half to Emily Hot. I'm gonna flip the script, Alex. Mac Morgan is coming out hot. Three strikeouts so far in just an inning and a third. Not a huge strikeout pitcher. She had 20 on the year and right around 55 innings. But as you said, three in relief so far. Well, when you talk about her out distribution, 75% of her outs are ground balls. So that's a lot of balls put in play. Megan Baylor swing and miss and guess a little bit today. Struck out three of six, keeping their offense at bay. Baylor scored three times in the second inning. And that is all. Of course, right as we say that, the count goes 3 0. A lot of times you get that strikeout, your adrenaline's high, energy rush. You have to be able to calm your heart rate down, come right back to work, and not try to work on that high. Pylon, part of that big second inning for Baylor, an RBI double. Right to Martinez. Two away. No hits so far off Morgan, three strikeouts, a couple of walks. Here comes Shaylin Govan, walked twice in the opener, homered yesterday, and today has reached twice. Well, and her home run yesterday did come off Mac Morgan, so Morgan have to be conscious of that. Stay low in the zone. And Morgan had only given up two home runs on the year before that one. <laughs> 0 and 2 to the All American. Well, two pretty pitches right there by Mac Morgan. The first a little bit up in the zone, about two balls above the knee, but that last one tucked knee height right on the inner corner. Well, that's a very competitive ball right there. Knowing Shaylin Govan, power hitter, a lot of times they can be aggressive. Try to see if you can get them to chase that ball down and in. Lifted to shallow right field. Maloney on the run and makes the grab, sliding in for the, the ESPN app. Coming up right after this game. I know you'll be watching, Kat. As you're in your car. No? I'll be safely driving. <laughs> At some point. It oh. may re-air. We're not sure. But I just in case it yeah. doesn't, catch the premiere. I do think that is uh, such a cool program to be able to capture what they've done. Jarrett Elliott has done a tremendous job. He took over as the coach my freshman year of college here at Texas. And just to see how quickly they built on each season and were able to be national contenders. And then it's hard to stay there. And he's been able to recruit and develop and have a staff that has been able to continuously put out not just amazing, amazing volleyball players, but quality people too. When you talk about Logan Eggleston and Madison Skinner and Molly McCage and I can name them all and all and all. Ashton Maloney, she's digging for two and a leadoff double for Ashton Maloney. She is three for three today. Well, there's a reason Ashton Maloney hits over 400 and she sees the ball so well and Texas 
And Mike White looking like a genius putting her in the leadoff spot for the Longhorns in this series. She saw the depth of Walkendorf and Hot there and knew that she had the ability to get to second base before the throw. Close play, but aggressive base running pays off. Did Jared Elliott ever try to recruit you to play volleyball? He did have a conversation with me once. My roommate my freshman year was actually a volleyball player, a setter, and so I was laying out in the stands pregame, waiting for you know other teammates to show up, and he walked over and was like, you're tall, you're long, have you ever played volleyball? And I said, yeah, my freshman year of high school. He's like, could we talk you into possibly playing? I was like, mm, yeah. no. Can we talk? That's, a, that's, that's done with. <laughs> Then he gave me grief and 04 I went with a couple volleyball players up to Omaha to watch the baseball team play and we were playing sand volleyball and playing around. And he was like, you have to do this in front of me after I've asked you to. <laughs> right. so, yeah, I had a little, I have a, I think I have a pretty good career in softball ahead of me. And he's done just fine as well to say the least. In charge of that unreal program. 2-1 to be a Scott, skied into foul territory. Pylon has to turn around. It's another foul ball that drops in there. Well, I'm not sure if the wind is playing with this or it's the sun because Emily Hot lost one in the shadows down in deep left field foul territory too, but Pylon gets twisted up and just cannot read the depth of that one. New life for Mia Scott and Texas. I will say this, we just showed the flags waving a moment ago. They were dead, there was no wind. I do think that new grad student housing, it has altered the wind patterns here a little bit over the last, what, it's been up for about a year now they've been building it, a yeah, couple I mean, years. The structure itself has been there for a little bit, so that could definitely play a factor. Shallow left center, pylon is there. I do think those Texas hitters have to view that building as just one giant target to leave the yard, we said. Numerous shattered windows, Katie Stewart, Jordan Whitaker yesterday in batting practice, cracked one. Got the tape up already. It's an achievement there if you can do that, I would think. Oh yeah, that's going to be a, a claim to fame or a, you know, a notch in your belt for hitters at Texas. Keep track of how many windows you break. Back up the middle from Vivi Martinez. The throw home, not in time. Texas goes up 7-3, but Martinez out at second. Well, this pitch up and out. Vivi Martinez, just simple, short swing, drives it up the middle. The speed of Mia, or excuse me, Ashton Maloney scores easily. Vivi Martinez trying to advance on the throw, but Lavalle quickly gets that ball to West over there for the second out. Talk about all the players who have been red hot over this series in the last week. Maloney, seven hits in the series. Martinez. At that base knock, she's hitting 700 plus over the last five games. And here is Reese Atwood, two for two today. Three hits yesterday and two midweek against Texas State. Her batting average now back above 400. Again, you talk about Reese Atwood and her consistency this week. It wasn't flashy until we said it wasn't flashy, and then she hit a double off the wall, starting to show some more of that power that fans saw early in season. Oh, absolutely crushes this one. A towering blast to left field. Home run number 13 for Reese Atwood. Grab that souvenir. Well, Alex, I'm just going to keep saying it's not flashy because when I do, she <laughs> makes it one of the loudest hits of the weekend. The sophomore catcher, just unbelievable in how she's able to handle the up pitch, but the ups and downs of the season. 
Such an incredible drive. Riley Crandall trying to get a rise ball past Reese Atwood there. She is now just a triple shy of the cycle today. RBI single, two run double. And that solo monster shot, I mean, that was up there forever. Exit velocity of 75 miles an hour. And when she's on, there's not many better in the country this year. No, and her double actually off the wall was a little more straight out. I thought that one was going to go out in the first inning. The way Hot gave, ch gave chase out there, I wasn't so sure if that was actually clearing the wall or if it was going to be catchable just because with the height, you never know. But Reese Atwood just incredible this season. She's now just five home runs shy of Taylor Hoagland's single season record of 18 for the Longhorns. Three one count now to Alyssa Washington. And a two out walk. After reaching base seven times in the series, two flyouts to left field for her today. First time on base for the captain. Texas is all down in the zone. I'm trying to induce ground balls and keep Texas off balance a little bit with that off speed. She did have five strikeouts yesterday. All five were on that changeup. She is the Big 12 leader in strikeouts with 100 on the year. Behind 2-0 to Henry, who struck out in the first, grounded out in the third. Alyssa Washington at first after the walk. And there is a strike to the freshman. Blew that one past Henry for strike two. That's two pitches that have gone inside to Henry that I don't think Benford is actually trying to throw that far in. Looks like they're getting away from her a little bit, but Henry being aggressive on that one to even the count. Swing and a miss, strikeout number 101 off. Head coach Mike White and coach, we just saw Reese Atwood go deep. She seems to be catching fire over the last week or so. How impressive has she been this year, just in general? Yeah, well, she's been struggling a little bit, but uh, you know, still getting a hit a game as they're struggling. But you know, right now she's trying to find some power again, and uh, you know, 13 time run was great, to, great timing for that. Coach Mac Morgan, not typically a strikeout pitcher, but three so far in her first two innings of work. What do you like from her today? Yeah, I mean, uh, other than a couple of walks, I mean, doing a really good job attacking the hitters and moving the ball around a little bit, um, and that's what we have to do. I mean, Baylor's got a good lineup, and they're dangerous. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate it. Thank you, Hookem. Mike White. Looking to go 35 and six on the season and improve to 14 and four in Big 12 play. Texas well on their way right now, but Baylor not finished quite yet as Binford, Collazos, and West do up here in the fifth inning. Strike for Mac Morgan. Benford, while she got off to a hot start, three for five in the two, first two games of this series. Texas has held her in check today with a ground ball out and a strikeout from Gutierrez. You know, quick work off of Mac Morgan as well. For Texas, this is their second to last regular season home series as we will cover Iowa State coming to town in a few weeks. Nichols the game before that, but hard to believe. Regular season coming to an end right around the corner. Yeah, just three Big 12 series left for Texas. Go to Kansas, have Iowa State, and then Texas Tech. And right now, at this point in the year, the Longhorns accomplishing their goal of setting themselves up to potentially host a super. Number one in the nation in the ESPN.com rankings, number one in the RPI. 
Not many question marks about this team right now. Texas gonna have to continually play with this intensity, this effort for the next three weeks. Not just to have a shot at the conference title, Big 12 title, as they leave the conference, but just so there is no doubt in the committee's mind. And again, you want to go into postseason on a high, not postseason trying to, to ramp up. Pope to shallow right. Maloney tracks that one. Mac Morgan's been great out of the pen, now in her third inning of work. So far, three strikeouts, a couple of walks, and that is all. No hits, no runs. There's Casey West. And for Baylor, trying to figure out their postseason positioning, came into this series 19th in the RPI, 24th in the polls. Morgan handles that one. And Bottom of the fifth underway as Katie Stewart takes ball one. Well, Katie Stewart, freshman getting settled in here, but as she ducked out of the way of that one, if you see, she has the teal ribbon in her hair and so many Texas players are wearing that ribbon in their hair around their belt loops, but they also had t-shirts prior to the game and their BP tops that had the teal ribbon, the SEC known in the SEC, all for Alex weekend, raising awareness for ovarian cancer. Alex Wilcox, an athlete that played at Mississippi State while actually undergoing chemo for ovarian cancer, ended up passing away, but the SEC, Mississippi State, the SEC head coach at the time, Van Sudeman, combined with Beth Tarina at LSU, who had Go Teal, which also was spreading awareness for ovarian cancer, joined forces, and every year there is a weekend for ovarian cancer awareness, and you see Baylor with the ribbons on their jersey as well. Great show of support here by both teams at McCombs Field and all around the country this weekend. That's truly probably the cause that I think almost every program nationwide gets in on and able to celebrate Alex and her determination to continue her career while she was battling ovarian cancer. I cannot imagine trying to be a student athlete and fitting your treatment for ovarian cancer into your schedule. An incredibly inspirational story. Well, some booze from the fans here. Well, I believe they're going to say when Katie Stewart swung at that last pitch, yeah. it was inside and hit her. But in order for it to be a foul ball, it has to hit the bat first, obviously. I think that might have nicked her leg as she swung, and therefore it is a dead ball strikeout. So one away here in the fifth inning for Katie Simmons. Get one more look at that Stewart at bat. So this pitch on the inner half. Yeah, as she's swinging, that goes off of her back leg. So it is a dead ball strikeout. Aliyah Benford says thank you very much to not offer the free pass there on a hit by pitch. So a couple of strikeouts here. Simmons way ahead of that changeup, and that's the difference maker between Aaliyah Benford and Riley Crandall is Benford's ability to change speeds early and often against this Texas lineup. Hitters count for Simmons. Fouls went off. Texas with nine hits today. And not many teams top five in the nation in batting average and ERA on the pitching side. Which has led to so much Texas success so far this year. Long run for Wachendorf. 
Hauled it in for out number two. Well, Alex, nine hits for Texas, but eight of those from the four, first four hitters alone. The lone ninth hit off the bat of Bella Dayton in the second inning. Top four for Texas, eight for 10, eight RBIs, three doubles and six runs scored. So they have really done the damage against Baylor in this third game. And here is Dayton. We talked about this being the time of the year, right about the time of year where she really starts to shine. Remember last year in the regional here in Austin, she reached eight times and of course had that magical run as a huge part of that Women's College World Series team for Texas in 2022. At her best in pressure situations. That intense stare and focus in the batter's box. Fouls one back. Well, Benford giving Bella Dayton three straight change-ups so far in this at bat. Well, just to get enough of that one to waste it. And Texas is going to have to identify that change up early if they're going to do any damage against Benford. Chopped over to West. On to inning number six. We go. Baylor had the lead in this one for about eight minutes in the second inning. I didn't say we're keeping that long. Three to two they led. And after that, Texas scored six unanswered. Well, we saw it yesterday in game two as every time Baylor scored, Texas responded and they continued that trend today as Baylor put up three in the second. Texas able to respond with four and then extend the lead in the fourth. But it's that ability to respond and just go back to work, not trying to do too much. Watson retired. It allows your pitchers to relax a little bit too, knowing that the offense is able to make things happen and it's not always a pitcher's high stressful pitcher's duel. Not that pitcher's duels are high stressful. Love pitcher's duels, right? I lived for them. LaValle fouls one off. Talk about the pitching for Mac Morgan. She's now faced 12 batters coming out of the pen, yet to give up a hit. Before that, Baylor had three runs off six hits. Well, talking to Coach White, he wasn't happy with the two walks in the third, her first inning of work, but since then, she really has been in control. Fifth inning alone, just only eight pitches, seven of those strikes, so she just attacked the zone, kept the ball out of reach of Baylor's barrels. How would you have liked working with a pitch clock in your day? Well, we actually had one internationally that was implemented towards the back half of my international career. So but as far have as had to Texas. work with it. Um, I don't know that it would have messed with my routine or my rhythm too much, but it is just another thing you have to be conscious of. So even if you do take an extra second, um, you have to know when you need to get back on the mound, or you just have to know that you need to call time if you're in a state where you can't settle down quick enough to get back on the mound. I certainly, and I think most fans would agree, like the pitch clock. You do wonder in tight games in the seventh inning, pressure moments, then really how much it plays a part uh, mentally with a pitcher who's in there in a situation like that. And we'll see how it is in the postseason as well in those situations. Morgan issues the one-out walk. Yeah, I think those situations are the ones where you just have to be cognizant enough to know that if you need extra time, you have to call time and call your catcher out or call an infielder over and just say, hey, I need an ex extra couple of seconds. It's not crucial that you have a full-blown conversation, but it buys you some time. And there's Mac Morgan's signature time call as her arms go out to the side. After the first pitch ball, coming off her third walk, so three walks and three strikeouts. I do think Mac Morgan is one who is very aware of when she does need that extra second, though. I see her call time herself quite often in situations where she throws two, three, four balls in a row. 
she doesn't necessarily have a conversation with Reese Atwood when she comes out as much as, hey, I just need a reset. So get out here, give me a couple extra seconds, and let's go back to work. And Mike White mentioned that Oklahoma series. She got a little frustrated at times with the strike zone, as any pitcher does in most games. But knowing when to take a step back, obviously, like you mentioned, huge for the veteran. When it's getting frustrated with strike zone, sometimes you get frustrated with yourself. I mean, you're not trying to not execute your pitch. I think that's the first thing people have to realize. You do get frustrated with yourself and your inability to do what you're trying to do with the ball. Well, so Washington waits for it in the quick toss over to first. But to continue that thought, it's then being able to have the awareness to reset yourself to throw strikes versus overthrowing, which is where Coach White talks about her frustration sometimes leads to her overthrowing, which elevates her ball a little bit and allows it to get barreled up just a little bit harder than normal. Two-way for Emily Hot. We mentioned it post-game yesterday that it is interesting for the number one team in the nation who's been so good not to have a definite ace. We'll continue that conversation coming up after the break as Morgan and the Texas defense at this point, Cap. Yeah, the top four hitters have really been the catalyst for in this game for Texas. But I do believe it's the move of Ashton Maloney to lead off. She's so aggressive, but able to get herself on in so many ways. She has the power slap. She'll drop a bunch. She can soft slap. We saw that the first hit of the game was a soft slap to pylon at shortstop that she beat out. That momentum that she just starts the game with carries over. You know, it helps when you're three for three. And that average up to team leading 447 on the season. We were talking about before the break, Texas is pitching out. It's interesting, number one team in the nation. Kind of doesn't have a definite ace. You have the freshman Cavan who started 15 games. Gutierrez has started 13. Mac Morgan nine as that one scooped up by Pylon, not in time. Before we continue that, how about Ashton Maloney now four for four? You know, I used to say in my next life, I wanted to be Caitlin Lowe to know how it was to be fast and patrol the outfield and beat out slaps. And I still think it'd be cool to be Caitlin Lowe, but I think I want to be Ashton Maloney in my next college life so I can be at Texas again and do that. <laughs> Maloney over at first, here comes Mia Scott. So when you look at Texas's breakdown, obviously the deepest staff Mike White has had. Who do you feel like are the one and two starters? Maybe even not in that order but just your main couple of starters. Well, I think they definitely have given the nod to Kavan and Gutierrez as the starters. And as the season continues here in the home stretch, I think they'll use that unless one proves otherwise that they shouldn't be. I do think freshman Kavan is best as a starter. But you have Mac Morgan as an option who has done both roles, not only this year, but over the course of her career. And depending on what a lineup looks like, if a lineup is lefty heavy, you have Estelle Check who could jump in. And I think that's the benefit of one, not having a true ace, is other teams can't prepare just for one person in a crucial situation. But at the same time, you have so many tools that somebody has a hot hand, you can all of a sudden insert them as a starter because obviously at points in the career, they were a starter and they can handle that. A great point, a very diverse staff for Mike White. Mac Morgan has started nine games, including some clutch wins. Texas is pitching top five in the nation in ERA and top ten in shutouts as well. Trying to tack on a few more runs in support of Morgan here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Mia Scott over at first. This one misses to Martinez. Well, Benford giving Texas a heavy dose of that change up and giving Martinez ready for it there, just to still a little bit early yanking that foul. One misses to Martinez. 
We're talking about all the upsets this weekend. You had seven top 10 teams losing, five of the top six. And number six LSU is trailing three to one to unranked Auburn in the bottom of the seventh inning. LSU already lost to Auburn in that series. Yeah, LSU dropped in game one on Friday, the night of upsets. Well, here comes the mighty Reese Atwood, three for three with a single, a double, and a home run. This was a towering blast that left the park in the fourth inning. Riley Crandall leaving a rise ball just over the heart of the plate. Reese Atwood likes that up pitch. She can get her barrel there well and does so. But right now, Alex, just a triple shy of the cycle. 100% doable here for Reese Atwood. Two one. Atwood 61 RBIs on the year, five shy of tying the single season Texas record and five homers shy of tying that record in a season. Now ahead three and one with two already on. Right now, it doesn't look like Benford is trying to give Reese Atwood anything that she can get the barrel to. Base is loaded for Texas. Atwood reaches for the fourth time in the fourth different way. Well, here comes the captain, Alyssa Washington. Seven home runs on the year, a career high. And time called by Glenn Moore for the moment. See which. So here we go, runners all around. Only one out here in the sixth inning. And here is Washington, the corners playing in. Ball one from West. Alyssa Washington, 500 hitter on the year with the bases loaded. Washington over to left field. That will drive in one, make it 9-3 Longhorns. Go ahead and account Melissa Washington ready to hit this pitch over the plate. Pulls an outside pitch, a little bit middle out, but just enough to get through a pulled in infield RBI single for the captain. Base is loaded again, this time for Caden Henry, the freshman. Henry's due, struck out against Crandall in the first, struck out against Binford in the fourth. hitting above 400 at points this season. But Coach White probably have a conversation about just calm down, don't try to do too much. We don't need a home run. We just need to continue to pass the bat. Sometimes as a freshman, you want to join in on the hit brigade and start chasing pitches that aren't there or trying to swing for the fence without really knowing it. 1-1 one, one on the way from West. Strike two. That's a good pitcher's pitch there by Casey West. I think that barely split the outside corner, but we'll say Bubba Ewell behind home plate has been fair both ways. Chopped over to West. She goes home and they get the force two away. And it'll be a pinch hitter coming up here with two outs and the bases loaded for Texas Victoria Hunter. The freshman out of Houston. 
who's hitting 414 in her first season with the Longhorns. Number 12 recruit in the nation. Couple of home runs, couple of doubles, and a triple so far. We'll see what she does here with the bases full of horns. Hunter, another young athlete that Texas is going to rely on as they move forward. Obviously, the graduation of Bella Dayton, Alyssa Washington offensively this season. And went around for strike one. But the sophomore class and the freshman class this year really have been able to hold their own. As Texas transitions into the SEC, that's going to be so important for the experience of their roster. Hunter had a decorated high school career, hitting better than 600. And this is a player Mike White said he was definitely going to find pinch hit opportunities for. He said that before the season even started. Three and one. Well, if you're a potent hitter on this Texas roster, the question is going to be where can you play defensively? And if you're trying to put athletes into your lineup, you look at where is there a hole defensively, and there's really not for Texas. So you have to be able to adapt to the pinch hit roll or DH when available. But Victoria Hunter has really been able to solidify herself as a very competitive at bat when Coach White needs quality at bats in pitch hit opportunities. Full count with the bases loaded, two away. Hunter over to short, Pylon handles that nicely. And we move on to the seventh the inning, Baylor seven. down care of business, but we talked about the upsets, they continue. So LSU, the number six team in the nation, lost again to unranked Auburn. And right now in the fifth inning, unranked Kentucky is beating number eight Georgia 5-0. So much parity. And parity and you know both those matchups you talk about are in the SEC and I it's already crazy in the SEC. I can only imagine what it's going to be from here on out as Texas and OU transition into that conference next year. It'll be like its own in-season tournament. Weekend and weekend week out, I think you're gonna see upsets and shocking moments and big games so it'll be exciting once those two head over i will say my my big 12 purest heart is a little sad but understand change is always happening you can never let go we'll have to save our lhn shirts too it'll be a collector's item uh, yeah you want one of mine i'll autograph it for you <laughs> Put that baby on eBay. Shaylin Govan. Right center. One away. A great response by Mac Morgan right there after giving up the leadoff single to Presley Pylon. Got in enough on Shaylin Govan to get the fly ball to Caden Henry in center field. be interesting to see where Baylor ends up in the postseason. Will it potentially be in this park as the throwback to first? Oh my goodness. Brooms are out looking for the sweep. We nearly saw the second out of this final contest here. That was as close as you can get without being called an out. Well, that's the second time this week that Reese Atwood has almost had a snap throw out to first base there to pick off a runner. 
course, you're not going to challenge it in a situation like this, the score being what it is, but one more look. Well, it's just a nonchalant throw, but Pylon over there wasn't getting back as soon as Reese caught that ball. Okay, two on. Well, Mac Morgan trying to use the inner half to Aliyah Benford there and just not able to find the corner. Everything very tight on Benford. Also see Benford towing that chalk line a little bit to take away the river. Collazos, look at this. Baylor with the bases loaded in the seventh inning. Mac Morgan, Morgan hadn't given up a hit in three innings of relief work. And on the seventh, a couple of singles and a walk. If you want to call it energy, enthusiasm, getting up for those games, whether it was against Texas State or this series against Baylor. Living right up to that number one ranking. Over to short, Martinez. That one gets past her. She felt like the runner got in her way. Glanced over at the umpire, two run score, 9 5. Mike White calls time. Well, Casey West hits a hopper to Vivi Martinez, and you see Vivi Martinez kind of almost stumble there, and you have to imagine she'd keep playing the play if she didn't feel contact, but. Ran a little bit. It was interesting towards the runner who's moving to the right. The ball went to her left. Versus, no, don't replay that. I'm not sure. Here we go. Awaiting the announcement. The explanation of Mike White and his coaching staff. Well, they don't look, play stands. Two run score, runners on second and third. Now a 9-5 game with one out. Anna Watson, the sixth year senior from Hewitt at the plate. That one just foul. Three straight Baylor batters have reached against Mac Morgan, a walk and a couple of singles. Well, that's three straight hitters in a row and four out of six this inning that have swung at the first pitch against Mac Morgan. Mac Morgan needs to work wide of the plate or down in the zone. Watson to center, will it be deep enough? Collazos tags and then retreats to third. And as a big out here in the seventh, two away. So the series comes down to Zadie Lavalle with her team down by four. And Mike White heads over to the home plate umpire. And he's heading out to the circle as well. Come in relief rolls, make sure you get them some experience there, and Tegan Kavan, the opportunity here for a save. First pitch misses to Zadie Lavalle, the senior catcher out of Oklahoma. She's reached three times today. RBI single in the second and a couple of walks. Strike one. Kavan with the second best ERA in the nation among Power Five freshmen. And the Bears down to their last strike. You didn't give me the heads up on that one. A little surprise stat there. Oh, oh the ball. There's only so much I can do here. Doesn't chase the one, two. But that surprise stat was a good one, too. I wasn't <laughs> ready for that either. <laughs> oh, my. Here we go. Two, two on the way, two on, two away. Full count. Last thing you want to do is issue a walk and bring up the tying run.
Washington underneath it makes the grab and Texas sweeps Baylor taking the finale 9-5 in Austin. Well,